Hi LEGO fans! It's minifigure blind bag feeling time again and shh, be very very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits and pigs, coyotes, Tasmanian devils and roadrunners. Meep meep. I've got a whole box of LEGO Looney Tunes blind bags and I'm going to teach you my system for feeling out a complete set of Looney Tunes collectible minifigures with no duplicates, no disappointment and no wasted money. Forget bump codes and serial numbers, you can feel what's inside every blind bag and easily identify the character in seconds. This time we have 12 classic and some not so classic Looney Tunes minifigures to find. Bugs Bunny, Lola Bunny, Daffy Duck, Tweety Pie, Sylvester the Cat, Roadrunner, meep, meep. Wile E. Coyote, Porky Pig, Petunia Pig, Speedy Gonzales, Tasmanian Devil and Marvin the Martian. Each blind bag costs $4.99 in the USA or £3.49 in the UK. This means the Brits have a slightly better deal this time. Factoring in an average 7% for sales tax, each minifigure costs 9% more in the USA. Looney Tunes is a series of animated shorts produced by Warner Brothers from 1930 to 1969. This was a very different time and as such not all Looney Tunes plot lines are appropriate for today. In a prime example from 1941, Bugs Bunny starred in All This and Rabbit Stew. Bugs was pursued by an African American hunter portrayed in a very inappropriate way. Other inappropriate character traits were exhibited by Pepper Le Pew who sexually harassed cats he mistook as female skunks. Speedy Gonzales, who didn't exactly portray Mexican people in the most positive light, did make the cut. Whether you're looking for a specific character or a whole set, feeling what's inside minifigure blind bags is super easy. I start by printing off a sheet showing the minifigures and their accessories. Each minifigure has unique accessories which will help you find them and being cartoon characters there are some very distinctive head moulds. I'm going to feel out a complete set of 12 and I'll explain what I'm feeling for as I identify each character. For brevity I'll cut out the duplicates and add bookmarks to the video so you can jump to the character you need help with. I'll also be taking a close up look at each character and comparing them to their on screen counterparts. These are totally random and I have no idea what's inside so let's get down to business and hunt us out a complete set of 12 Looney Tunes minifigures. Ok so let's get this blind bag feeling party started. I've got my sheet here which shows me all 12 characters and more importantly the accessories that they have within the bag. Those are super important for feeling out the characters. I've also got my first bag here which is not going to be a duplicate, that's always the benefit of the first one. And if you look up in the top right hand corner here, future Jeremy is going to put a picture of the character that I'm feeling out in the bag right now. So this first one, uh, definitely not a duplicate and quite a thick bag. I'm going to have a feel around first of all and I can feel immediately there's some kind of inner bag in here so there's going to be quite a number of parts. Uh, I've got a, a base plate here, one of the uh, 3 by 4 base plates with the studs along the top. Super easy to find but every single character has one of those. Now what else can we find? That, that feels like a torso, they all feel pretty much the same except for Roadrunner and then I've got a large piece here. Ah, right, okay. So what we've got is a large kind of round piece here and um, yeah I think immediately I've got Speedy Gonzales because he's got a ridiculously big hat here. We've got this super oversized sombrero and I think actually the head is, yeah you can feel the head moulded into it. Now if this is Speedy Gonzales I should also find some of these triangular cheese slope pieces which actually are cheese. You've just got to be careful that you don't mix these up with Wiley Coyote because he's also got uh, a cheese slope in the bag. So yeah, immediately I've got a cheese slope, it's a triangular piece in there, I've got a large piece of headgear so I can say with absolute certainty this is going to be Speedy Gonzales. So I will push all of the pieces out of the way, get my scissors out and we'll prove it's speedy. So here we go, there's the inner bag, you can feel that within the bag, a uh, bit of a giveaway. We've got these cheese slope pieces here and then yeah this is what we're looking for, the massive massive piece of headgear. You can feel this very very clearly inside the bag, it's a big cone shaped piece on top and you can see the head is actually moulded into the headgear here. So let's put Speedy Gonzales together and take a closer look. We're starting out really strong with Speedy Gonzales, the fastest mouse in all Mexico. Arriba, arriba, andale, andale. 
He first appeared in Cattails for Two in 1953, but became mainstream in 1955, appearing alongside Sylvester the Cat, who was protecting a cheese factory in Mexico. Like every minifigure in the series, he comes with one of these 4x3 plates, which has studs for the minifigure to stand on. Although you don't really need to feel for these, Speedy does have three cheese slopes, which are printed with this cheese design. If you do feel a cheese slope, it's not automatically Speedy Gonzales. You'll also find a cheese slope with the Wily Coyote minifigure. His costume is what was at the time a traditional outfit worn by men and boys of rural Mexican villages. Ironically, for a mouse that runs really fast, he has non-movable, non-posable legs. These are dual-molded and have some printing on the toes. The torso is almost completely white, except for a printed red neckerchief. There's no printing around the back, but you will notice a flexible tail which fits between the body and the legs. All 12 figures, with the exception of Marvin the Martian, have a custom molded head. The large brim and pointy cone make the head very distinctive to feel out inside the bag. The element is dual molded from two different colours of plastic and has some printing for Speedy's facial features. When it comes to recreating the character we see in the cartoons, LEGO has absolutely nailed it here. They've even captured the lighter detail inside of Speedy's ears. This is a really sweet minifigure and I can't wait to find the other 11. Speaking of sweet, what is Speedy Gonzales' favourite thing to buy from the candy store? Haribo! Haribo! So Speedy Gonzales was a really easy figure to feel out for bag number one and we're moving on to bag number two. This is a little bit thinner and what have we got in here? We've got the, uh, oh I can feel straight away the leaflet, that's this thing which can open up and show you all of the characters. Um, really useful for checking off the ones you found, we've got the base plate there which is useless. Uh, we have some legs so you can feel them moving around inside the bag. But then what else have we got? Ah, now this is interesting. I can actually... Ah, I've lost it. I could get my finger inside that. It felt like one of the uh, the cauldron pieces you get with the Harry Potter sets. Um, and that can only be one character. Now I think, if we check out the, uh, the sheet here, this could be uh, the Roadrunner, because you've got this kind of thing here, this bowl with birdseed in, which of course Wily Coyote's put out for him to try and attract him and catch him. Um, and to back that up actually, yeah, I've got the like the popcorn piece that's sometimes used for ice cream in Lego. That's going to be the, the yellow birdseed that you see inside the bowl. Now there's one other thing I want to check. Firstly we should have a piece of headgear, which is going to be up in this corner here. And I'm feeling for a beak. Now this should have a plume on top, but I suspect the plume is going to be soft plastic. Yeah, there's definitely a beak there. And the real giveaway with the Roadrunner is going to be the torso piece, which I think I've just found. Okay, yeah, so on top of the torso piece you can feel the, uh, the post on which the head goes. And then the Roadrunner doesn't have arms. It's actually got these kind of wings on the side. So I think the best thing we can do is open this up and show you exactly what I was feeling. Let's uh, use these scissors here, hopefully not cut anything inside. And okay, we do have one of these inner bags here, which can make things a little bit tricky. And actually, yeah, that's another thing you could be feeling out for. It's really flexible plastic, but this really uh, kind of flimsy tail here, it's difficult to feel inside the bag. But let's get into, into here and down to business. So this is the torso and you will see it's got kind of weird bird shaped arms on there and those are very distinctive inside the bag. Definitely tell you you've got the uh, the Roadrunner. You've got the headpiece here which doesn't have the plume on top. The plume is a separate piece and again that's a bit thin, bit difficult to feel but what you can also feel for is this bowl. It looks like a, a kind of almost like cauldron and that's going to have the, uh, the bird seed which is another distinctive but quite small element. So let's put Roadrunner together and take a closer look. Meet me. So this is the fantastic Roadrunner who was half of one of my favourite double acts from Looney Tunes. Roadrunner and his nemesis Wiley Coyote were created for Warner Brothers in 1948 by Chuck Jones and Michael Maltese. Roadrunner's accessory is a bowl of birdseed which will undoubtedly have been left as bait by Wiley Coyote. It consists of a sangreen bowl and this kind of popcorn or ice cream element. There's also a stud inside to make the birdseed sit proud of the rim. Now there's no mistaking that this is definitely Roadrunner, but he does look a little bit odd. In the cartoon, he or she has very slim legs. Lego doesn't really have a part that recreates that, so we've got these full-size minifigure legs. They're just about the right colour, but way too chunky. If you look really closely, you'll see a small amount of printing on the feet. 
The torso is a slightly better representation of the character and is super easy to feel inside the bag. All of the other minifigures have standard minifigure arms and hands, but Roadrunner has these wings. There's no printed detail on the front of the torso, and if we spin him round, there's no printed detail on the back either. What we do have is this very impressive tail which is made out of super soft plastic. It makes it really difficult to detect inside the bag. By far my favourite thing about this minifigure is the head mould. This just screams meep, meep. As far as I can tell I think this head is triple moulded. We've got the light blue plastic at the bottom, the dark blue plastic at the top and then yellow plastic here for the beak. Lego really has upped its game with the moulding process for these minifigures. The eyes do seem to be printed on, but the detail is very crisp indeed. Roadrunner's crowning glory is this plume which is inserted into the top of the head. Comparing the minifigure to the on-screen character, it's good but it's not quite right. All of the character traits are there and the colour is perfect, but the legs just don't go. Despite the issue with the legs, I really do like this minifigure and I can't wait to reunite him with Wily e. Coyote. So two characters down and no duplicates. I'm just going to cross off the ones I've found which helps me keep track and let's move on to bag number three. So what do we have here? Again relatively empty bag this, no immediately big parts in there. Uh, I've got a pair of legs so you can feel those wobble from side to side so they do move. I think one of these characters, in fact it was uh, Speedy Gonzales, definitely has fixed legs. Uh, which is another reason you can find him. Uh, what else do we have in here? I've got a torso piece, but yeah, you can feel the arms on there. There's nothing distinctive. We've got standard legs. And then actually, this is probably going to help us. So what I've got here is going to be one of the big molded heads. And I can actually feel, it feels like a, a big triangle on top. That might be a pair of rabbit ears. And if it is, I think Lola has the ears that sweep backwards. Uh, I can actually feel the hole at the bottom there where the head goes onto the body. Now, if this is Lola, we are going to have a ball in there because Lola was featured in Space Jam. Uh, I was going to say a terrible movie, but I've not seen it. But uh, certainly it's about basketball and we should have a little ball inside the bag, which is going to prove that this is Lola. So let's just have a feel around. In fact, there it is. Okay. Uh, you may not be able to see this on camera, but we do have a ball within the bag. So this is definitely going to be Lola the Bunny, who was uh, Bugs Bunny's love interest in Space Jam, the uh, 90s movie, I think, uh, with Michael Jordan. Uh, let's open this up, see what we've got inside and show you what I was feeling for. So, um, yeah, we've got legs and a torso. Those are very standard, as is that and that. But the two elements you want to be feeling for are, firstly, Lola's head. So. Here it is, and what you can see is she's got a headband on there and then she's got her um, ears horribly contorted backwards and bunched together. Uh, but those are rigid plastic, you can really feel those. And then we've got this basketball, which um, actually is more orange than red. Um, it looked red on the picture. Uh, but this is very distinctive inside the bag, quite small to find. But if you are trying to confirm that you've got Lola, you want to be feeling for the head and also this ball. So this is Lola Bunny, and out of all of the characters in the set of 12, this is the one I'm least excited about. In fact, Lola first appeared in the 1996 film Space Jam, which I've never seen, although this version of Lola looks a lot more sexy than the Lego version. Space Jam is all about basketball, and as such, Lola has an accessory in the form of this basketball. Well, it's a kind of round orange thing that I'm sure Lego thought would do the job. Despite Lola being very much a B-list character, the minifigure does have many redeeming features. The legs are dual moulded from pink and lilac plastic, and the printing is some of the crispest LEGO printing I've ever seen. The basketball shoes are very detailed with side printing and even printing for the tongs and the laces. The quality of printing on the torso is also really good, showing Lola wearing a cropped basketball top over an impossibly slender body. That printing continues on the back of the torso, which also features a really cute bunny tail. It's just a shame that we don't have a LEGO part for that. Of course, the standout feature of this minifigure is the head mould. It's dual moulded and has some really nice printing, but from the front it doesn't half remind me of a chipmunk. Up on top we have a shock of blonde hair, and tucked away around the back we have a pair of rabbit ears which make this very distinctive to feel out inside the bag. These are made of rigid plastic and are quite unmistakable. As I mentioned earlier, Lola Bunny raised eyebrows in Space Jam for being quite sexualised. I think the Lego version is trying to be more like this Lola Bunny which appeared in later cartoons. 
Space Jam A New Legacy is coming out in July 2021, and Lola Bunny has been very much redesigned for the times. As a minifigure, I think this is a super cute character, but there are definitely other classic Looney Tunes characters which could have taken a place in this set. Moving swiftly on, we've reached bag number four, so let's see what we've got inside here. Not a lot of stuff actually, so uh, no massive parts. Uh, we've got the base plate there and the leaflet. Uh, that feels like, yeah, that's going to be a torso piece. And does it have arms? Oh no, it's not a torso at all. Uh, we have movable legs. Um, okay, so it's a character with legs that narrows it down. That is going to be a torso piece. I can feel the head post there. And it feels like we've got hands, so um, obviously not a roadrunner. Um, now what have we got here? This is a little bit bigger. Very rigid, uh, almost like banana shape there and there's a place where it feels like a minifigure head could go which is quite interesting because most of these figures actually have a uh, molded head like uh, Porky there and that would mean that we've got a minifigure head in here somewhere and that would narrow it down to only ah, in fact there it is yeah that's an actual um, if you know the shape of a minifigure head there's only one character which has one of those and it's going to be Marvin the Martian because he's got the head inside the uh, the helmet there. Now, to be sure, let's just, ah, there it is. Yeah, we've got a ray gun. I can feel the uh, the handle there, and then the form. It almost feels like a hair dryer. So this is most definitely going to be Marvin the Martian, one of my uh, favorite Looney Tunes characters. Uh, definitely like the episodes where he shows up and bumps into Bugs Bunny. And we do have an inner bag here and uh, yeah, the usual guff inside. So let's get this inner bag open. So, right, what are we feeling with Martian? What are we feeling for with Marvin, should I say? So we've got this minifigure head. Uh, yeah, that is a standard minifigure head with the eyes on it. And then, yeah, the two things we're looking for, firstly, are the ray gun. Very distinctive feeling piece, looks a little bit like a hairdryer. But then also this helmet, and I'll, ah, there's the banana piece on top. We've got this kind of a brush on top of the helmet. Very distinctive, easy to feel out. We do have uh, these very tiny child's uh, movable legs, the torso piece. But yeah, you really want to be feeling for the head and the helmet and the, uh, the hair dryer. So this is Marvin the Martian, who will be very familiar to Looney Tunes fans, but actually only appeared in five theatrical cartoons between 1948 and 1963. I think my favourite was Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. He's holding a lime green ray gun, although more often he was trying to destroy the Earth with his Illudium Q36 explosive space modulator. Why did he want to destroy the Earth? It obstructs my view of Venus. His costume looks very Roman for good reason. It's based on the style of armour usually worn by the Roman god of war, Mars. The Roman style helmet with large brush on top is made out of very rigid plastic and makes it an easy feel inside the bag. My only criticism is that the pieces at the side don't flare out like you see in the cartoon. Making up for that, the helmet is beautifully moulded and I love the detail on top. Marvin's legs are the medium sized poseable legs and have some really nice white printing for the boots. He's the only character from this series to come with any kind of fabric cape. You need to be careful not to leave this in the bag and also not to cut it when you're opening the bag. There's no printing on the back of the torso or the front of the torso, but we do have a really nice contrasting print for the eyes. Marvin is the only minifigure in the set of 12 to come with an actual minifigure head. It's a really good part to feel out for, as is the ray gun and this fantastic molded helmet. When we compare the minifigure to the character in the cartoons, there are obvious differences. The body is very much out of proportion, as are the feet. But bodily dimensions aside, this is clearly recognisable as Marvin the Martian. We've reached bag number five, and it's probably about time for a duplicate, but uh, let's have a feel around and see what we've got. We've got um, the plate there, the base plate, but then... Oh, actually, that's immediately distinctive. There's not a lot in this bag. Um, what I've got here is a kind of stick but interestingly it's got a grip you can actually feel there's somewhere for the minifigure's hands to go and that may narrow it down to one character i think it does uh, there's also a large piece of headgear and if i feel that um i think i feel ears here um, there's also that's going to be a tailpiece it's kind of uh, flexible plastic you can feel where it 
yeah, there you go. The two holes where it goes on top of the minifigure legs. And yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, the key thing here is the almost like rounders bat or baseball bat. And if we refer to our sheet, we are gonna see that this is Sylvester, Tweety Pie's nemesis. Definitely going to be Sylvester the Cat because that's the only one with the uh, kind of rounders bat or truncheon or whatever you want to call it. So uh, we should see a black character inside the bag. And let's see what we got there. There we go. Make sure we've got everything this time. Let's get that out of the way. So this is the thing you want to be feeling for. And I remember this is, um, I think this is pretty much the same kind of element as we got with the uh, Itchy and Scratchy in the Simpsons season, uh, series. Uh, we've got these great full size double molded legs there and uh, yeah the things we're feeling for it's going to be that headpiece here you can see sylvester's face uh fairly distinctive but he doesn't have the big bunny ears and then yeah honestly if you get that uh, that rounders bat or baseball bat then uh, you've nailed sylvester this is Sylvester James Pussycat Senior, who appeared in both the Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies series of cartoons. In fact, he appeared in 103 cartoons, and three of them won Academy Awards. Thuffering Thuckatash. His accessory is this baseball bat, which is a dead giveaway inside the bag. You're feeling for a long piece, but specifically a long piece with a hand grip. Being a cat, Sylvester isn't wearing a costume, but we do have some nice detail. The legs are dual molded from white and black plastic with some printed detail to show the fur. We also have some more printing around the front for the claws. The torso printing is not one of the strong points in this character because it's white printed on top of black. It gives the chest fur a kind of grey appearance. There's no printing around the back but we do have a really nice tail piece. It's made out of quite soft squidgy plastic which makes it quite difficult to feel inside the bag. The moulded head is much easier to find, but to be honest, with that baseball bat, you don't have to feel too hard. It's dual moulded from white and black plastic with some printed detail for the nose, the eyes, the ears and the whiskers. The minifigure's resemblance to the cartoon character is very, very good indeed. The main thing that lets it down is the contrast between the white fur on the chest and the black torso. I'm not sure Sylvester's my favourite minifigure from this series, but it is a pretty good effort. Okay, so we're off to a really good start, and we're on to bag number six. Um, again, a little bit uh, thin on the ground here. Let's see what we can find inside. That, okay, that's worth a look. What we've got here is a stick, and there are no, uh, there's no ridges on the stick. It's um, you know, just like one of the, uh, I guess, four stood long ones we used to get with the Harry Potter minifigures. And what else have we got in here? That field, yeah, that's a torso. Got um, two hands on the torso. So that's a base plate. What else have we got? I've got a stud here, and I'm immediately thinking a stud and a stick. But if this is indeed Porky Pig, we will have this distinctive uh, tile piece. So let's see if we can find that. That makes this character super easy to find, and yeah, here we go. So, what I've got, I think it's a two by four. Yeah, you can see two by four tile here. It's gonna be printed with the, 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 that's all folks. And um, yeah, he's the only character with one of those. So this is definitely gonna be Porky Pig. I don't need to feel for the head, although I absolutely can. Yeah, there's a round head in the corner there. But let's open it up and this is definitely gonna be Porky Pig. This is definitely not all folks. We've got another, quite a number of these to find. But let's see what we've got in here. So, alrighty. So this is the key thing. You've got this tile with that's all folks on it. Very uh, famous slogan from Warner Brothers, uh, the Looney Tunes in particular. We do have the uh, molded head there. Uh, you can feel for that. It's got the little piggy ears on there. Oh, I love the torso with the tail at the back there. Uh, but yeah, we've also got the uh, the one by well the uh, the four long uh, stick piece here. Uh, there's a angle bracket here which is going to be connecting up I guess to the back of the sign but uh, yeah that is the key thing that's all folks sign feel for that and you've got Porky Pig this little chap needs almost no introduction and is of course Porky Pig a Looney Tunes A-lister he appeared in 153 cartoons and stammered his way through most of them He's holding a sign printed with his catchphrase, da -da 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 that's all folks. It's a message that often appeared at the end of Looney Tunes cartoons and the two x four tile is super easy to feel out inside a bag. In typical Porky Pig style, he went to a lot of effort to choose a jacket and a bow tie, but wore no trousers. 
That reminds me, I must put sausages on the shopping list. The legs are poseable and have just a little bit of printing on the front of the feet for the hooves. His jacket, bow tie and white gloves are perfect, but I don't like the pink printing on the front of the torso. That flesh colour just doesn't match the legs. The printing around the back is very subtle but really adorable. You can see where the jacket rides up, exposing his little curly tail. Once again, the moulded head is the star of the show. You can feel this out inside the bag, but to be honest, the 2x4 tile is a giveaway. The overprinting for the eyes, eyebrows and mouth is absolutely perfect. The same can be said for the resemblance of the minifigure to the cartoon character. The only thing that irks me here is the weakness of the pink printing over the blue torso. Porky Pig is definitely one of the standout minifigures from this series, and of course it wouldn't be Looney Tunes without him. Well, bag number seven was another Roadrunner, so let's move on to bag number eight and see if we've got a duplicate here. Um, quite a thick bag. Oh, and that's a massive head in there. Oh, but very spiky. What I feel is a large set of ears. So it could be one of the rabbits. Uh, they feel like they're sticking up, could be Bugs Bunny. But then I've got this huge protrusion from the front. And that actually could be the snout of Wiley Coyote. Um, in fact, yeah, the, in fact, yeah, you can feel the whiskers out to the side there. Uh, so this is probably going to be Wiley Coyote, but let's see what else we can find to confirm that. Uh, that. Oh, right, that's a round piece. And I do feel there's a protrusion out of the top of it, which could be the piece that the uh, the anvil that he's got here sits upon. Um, so I'm, I'm actually, ah, yeah, there we go. So. What we've got here is a cheese slope. Now there's only two characters with cheese slopes and I know this definitely is not Speedy Gonzales because we don't have the massive sombrero in there. So this is definitely gonna be Wily Coyote, one of my favorite characters. And uh, let's open this up and see. We should have a big brown head in there that I can, oh, there it is, I can show to you. Uh, we've got the leaflet there and a bunch of stuff inside this bag. So let's get all the shiny plastic out of the way. All right, so key thing you're gonna be feeling for is this beautifully molded head with very sharp and rigid plastic ears. So they feel like rabbit ears, but they're not because you've got this massive snout, which is beautiful. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Uh, really nice dual molded head. And then these uh, these cheeks with all of the, uh, the whiskers, I guess. The other thing you can feel for inside the bag, um, Definitely cheese slopes, which are used to make the anvil. And uh, there is a tail in there, although these soft squidgy tails don't always feel out through the bag. And then we've got this, um, in fact, we've got two of these stud pieces here, which are round, and you can feel these quite distinctly within the bag. They've got this piece sticking up here. Uh, but um, yeah, once you've felt a couple of these heads, it's a real giveaway that this is Wily Coyote. This magnificent minifigure, possibly my favourite from the set, is Wily Coyote, otherwise known as Carnivorous Vulgaris. Alongside Roadrunner, he first appeared in 1948. He comes with an absolutely magnificent and very detailed moulded head. Captured on the front, we have all of the facial details which make up that maniacal stare. Viewed from the side, however, you can see just how impressive this mould is. Those forward bending ears and the long snout make him very easy to feel out inside the bag. Wily Coyote's sole purpose in life is to capture and eat the Roadrunner. To that end, he comes up with more and more elaborate plots. In this case, he's equipped with an anvil, which he intends to drop off a cliff onto the unsuspecting Roadrunner. On first inspection, the legs look like standard brown minifigure legs. But if you look real close, you can see some subtle printing on the toes. The printing on the torso doesn't quite match the colour of the head, but it does have a nice amount of detail. Protruding from around the back, we do have a tail, and it's quite a soft plastic which you might just be able to feel inside the bag. But the single best thing about Wily Coyote is that stare, it's brilliant! Lego has done a fantastic job of recreating this classic character in minifigure form. I'm honestly not sure it gets any better than this. Bags 9 through 12 were Porky Pig, Marvin the Martian, Speedy Gonzales, and Sylvester the Cat. And we're on to bag number 13. Um, maybe another duplicate, and I'll be recording that a bit again, but let's have a feel around, see what we find. Uh, we've got the base plate there. Uh, that is the leaflet. Then I've got something round here. Oh, that's interesting. Now that could, in fact, that does feel like a teapot. And what's next to it? <laughs> that feels like a teacup. Now, just referring back to my notes, 
I'm pretty sure Petunia Pig is the only character with a teapot and a teacup. Hopefully she's brewing up. Uh, let's have another feel around, see what else we can find in here. Ooh, big piece here. Okay, so that is definitely one of these elaborately moulded heads. Uh, I can feel like the piece at the bottom where the minifigure's torso stalk goes into it. And then, yeah, very hard plastic head. We've got some ears up on top here. Uh, what feels like braids at the side, yeah. Everything I can picture about Petunia Pig is in this bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and prove what I was feeling. Uh, we should see a huge flash of uh, kind of pink face, there we go. So yeah, we got Petunia Pig with this massive piece of headgear, which is hard plastic, so you will feel this. Um, yeah, you've got the ears at the top there, very sharp. Uh, these very rigid braids. And then, actually what I didn't feel was the skirt piece, but this is very distinctive as well. A hard plastic skirt with lots of ridges on. What I did feel was uh, these pieces. So what we have here is a teapot, which is quite distinctive. You can feel a round piece with the handle and also the uh, spout. Tip me up and pull me out. And then we've got the uh, two teacups here. I guess one for Porky and one for uh, Petunia. So let's put Petunia Pig together and I'm sure we can get her reunited with Porky Pig. So here we have one of the not so iconic minifigures from this series. This is Petunia Pig and she first appeared in Porky's Romance in 1937. As Porky Pig's popularity was eclipsed in the late 1930s and 40s by characters like Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny, Petunia Pig lost all relevance and faded into obscurity. Petunia comes with accessories in the shape of this teapot and a pair of teacups. I'm not entirely sure of the relevance because she doesn't appear in many cartoons, but they do come in rather useful for feeling the character inside the bag. Also very useful for identification is the skirt element, which is made out of hard plastic and has ridges all the way around. Underneath we have a fantastic pair of dual moulded legs complete with frilly printed underwear. There's also a small amount of printing on the feet for the hooves. Also getting a little bit of dual moulded action are the arms. The torso print is nice and simple with a black printed collar. There's no printing around the back but you will notice those fantastic pigtails. The head is made out of rigid plastic and you can easily feel these inside the bag. It's a beautiful dual moulded head with some very fine printing, especially for the facial features. The eyes are very clearly defined and there's some really nice detail for the mouth. We don't have a lot of reference material for Petunia Pig because she was quite an obscure character. That said, LEGO has done a really good job of recreating Petunia Pig in minifigure form. Although I have to question the character choice in terms of popularity, the actual execution and finished result of the minifigure is stunning. Bag number 14 was another Petunia Pig and 15 was Sylvester the Cat. So let's see if we've got something new inside bag number 16. Um, okay, quite a thin bag this time. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, what? Mm, yeah, oh, right. So, what I'm feeling here, I'm trying to get into the corner of the bag. Ah, oh, it'll do there. I've got a square piece, almost like a square tile. Except on the back of the tile is a clip. I can feel it there. Okay, so this is going to be some kind of sign. I've got the base plate. Uh, what is that? That's going to be a set of legs. Yeah, they do move. What kind of headgear do we have in here? Okay, that piece feels a little bit more substantial. Um, yeah, it's a head with with a bill sticking out of the front, I think. Uh, so the last thing I should be able to find in here is a stick. And what I'm thinking is that we've got Daffy Duck with his rabbit season sign. Uh, what a great episode. I love it when uh, Daffy and bugs appear in the same episode but yeah we've got one of these uh four stud long um sticks which are like the the ones that we get in the old harry potter characters this is definitely going to be daffy duck and there's one very distinctive piece you should be feeling for here which i shall show you okay here we go so this is the piece so any kind of rigid, hard piece with uh, corners is going to feel out really nicely inside the bag. And around the back here, we've got a clip element on the back. Uh, we don't have all of it here. Hang on. We also have one of these uh, four stud long, uh, I guess, yeah, you can tell it's as long as one of these uh, stick to go on the back of the sign. Let's do that. 
And then we've got a massive piece of headgear here and a, a tail actually. But yeah, Daffy Duck, uh, really easy to find. Just feel out for that sign and you've got him. So after Petunia Pig, we get back to the A-list characters. This is Daffy Dumas Horatio Tiberius Armando Sheldon Duck. He was the third most frequent character in Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies behind Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig. You're despicable! Daffy's accessory is a rabbit season sign which he used to try and get hunters to go after bugs instead of shooting him. It's a printed 2x2 element with a clip on the back and it makes it super easy to feel inside the bag. He has full-size dual molded legs which are the perfect colours for the character. The torso is all black save for a small amount of detail on the chest for the feathers. There's no printing around the back but if we move down the body you'll see a small tail sandwiched between the legs and the body. As we've come to expect by now the head mould is absolutely fantastic. It's dual molded out of black and orange plastic and captures Daffy Duck brilliantly. I love the tuft of feathers on top of the head and the eye printing is really really crisp. Comparing the minifigure to the real thing this is about as good as it gets. Lego even managed to print the white ring around Daffy's neck. So nine characters down and three to go, and I'm sure this is going to be a duplicate. Um, we basically run into duplicates at this stage. Uh, nothing to worry about uh, if you've bought the whole box. Um, but that's interesting. Oh, straight away, I know exactly who this is. Right, so what we've got here, really easy to find. We have a large round piece in this bag, and that can only belong to one character. If you do your homework right and you're looking at the sheet, you can see that Taz comes on this kind of whirlwind because of course he goes through the scene like a whirlwind and becomes some kind of hurricane or something. Um, you are going to find other stuff in here other than just a big round piece. Uh, in fact, yeah, there's a, a chicken leg and there is the chicken leg. There should also, uh, yeah, there is a round pie. So really easy to find. You want to feel for this round piece here, but that's... Let's put our money where our mouth is and actually prove it. Give that a good shake. Uh, cut this bag open. So, yeah, super easy, super easy. You can feel out Taz with confidence. You've got this massive round piece here with beautiful printing on uh, for the kind of uh, whirlwind effect that he has as he blitzes across the scene. Uh, massive piece of headgear here with the big mouth, uh, which you really don't need if you've felt out that. And then I was also feeling out accessories like the pie here and the piece of chicken. Um, again, these are really easy to feel out inside the bag. So really excited by the Tasmanian Devil. Let's put him together and see what we've got. Beware of the Tasmanian Devil, a vicious, ravenous brute with powerful jaws like a steel trap. It eats aardvarks, ants, bears, boars, cats, bats, dogs, hogs, elephants, antelopes, pheasants, ferrets, giraffes, gazelles, stoats, goats, shoats, ostriches, lions, jackals, muskrats, minks, dingoes, zebras, foxes, boxes, octopus, penguins, people, warthogs, yaks, gnus, newts, walrus, wildebeests, moose, mice, moles, snipes, elk, wapati, tortoise, roadrunner, elands, foxes, wolves, guinea hen, vultures, eagles, hummingbirds, squids, salamanders, water buffalo, bison, kangaroos, pigeons, doors, unicorns, vixens, octopus, ox, Penguins, widgeons, warthogs, yaks, newts, walrus, gnus, wildebeests, and especially rabbits. To illustrate the fact that the Tasmanian Devil eats just about anything, he comes with two accessories, a chicken leg and a pie. If you feel really carefully, you can feel these inside the bag. But by far the easiest thing to feel out inside the bag is this spinner. It's an alternative base plate for the Tasmanian Devil and you can use it to recreate the tornado that Taz becomes as he travels around the landscape. It works pretty well, but don't expect miracles. What differentiates the classic Tasmanian Devil from the later Taz is the facial print. Here we see the crazed, starved look of a Tasmanian Devil who wants to eat Bugs Bunny. In the later spin-off cartoons, which were very popular, Taz was much more friendly. Here's the minifigure compared to the cartoon character, and the resemblance is very, very close indeed. The tan plastic may be a little bit too dark, but otherwise it's brilliant. I don't think the Tasmanian Devil will overtake Wile E. Coyote, but it is among my favourites in this series. So I just hit quite a run of duplicates. I felt a Petunia Pig, Tasmanian Devil, Roadrunner, another Petunia, Sylvester the Cat, Tasmanian Devil, Porky Pig, and we're on to bag number 25. So let's see what's inside this little beauty. It's quite a thin bag, uh, but uh, let's have a feel around. Oh, immediately I feel a round piece. Yep, it's a round brick, uh, four studs on top, and I immediately know what that is. There's another one there, and uh, that feels like a headpiece. 
I know whose head that is. Um, and yeah, I think all in all, I've got three of those round pieces. So really easy to see them. They're round, uh, but also quite chunky. So this is gonna be my friend, Tweety Pie, because he's got this big mallet here, which he's gonna use to uh, hit Sylvester the cat. Uh, very Tom and Jerry-like pairing this, but um, yeah, this is Looney Tunes. I would like to see some Tom and Jerry minifigures. Uh, that would be quite cool, but we have Looney Tunes this time. And what we're gonna see is uh, three brown round pieces. Make sure there's nothing in there, get rid of that. Yeah, these are the pieces we're looking for. Actually, they are slightly different. One of them is a darker brown color and has the holes in the side, which are presumably for the, um, the handle to stick through. Uh, these are the key things. If you find these, it's the only character with those and they are very chunky, very easy to feel out inside the bag. We also have this rather cute uh, Tweety Pie head. I thought I'd do a putty tan. I did, I did do a putty tan. And yeah, very cool character. I'm gonna quit, quit the impressions and we're gonna get Tweety Pie built. So this is the very sweet and innocent looking Tweety who should not be underestimated. Some people call him Tweety Bird. I prefer to call him Tweety Pie. Tweety's accessory is a novelty oversized mallet which he uses to brain Sylvester the cat. It uses three large cylindrical elements which are super easy to feel out inside the bag. The minifigure itself is absolutely adorable and instantly recognisable as Tweety Pie thanks to that moulded head. The super crisp printing for the eyes and that little splash of colour on the beak really brings Tweety Pie to life. The legs are the shortest version you can get, non-posable and have a small amount of printed detail on the foot. Printing on the front of the torso is very minimal, just giving the impression of a contour on the breast of the bird. There's a small amount of printed detail around the back for his tail, but again it would have been nice to have had a little tail element. Comparing Tweety to his on-screen counterpart, it's clear the body is very much differently proportioned. Tweety's head and feet should be disproportionate to the body, but of course that's not achievable as a minifigure. Notwithstanding, this is an absolutely fantastic minifigure and that head mould really makes the character. So ironically, you spend all day trying to find a Tweety Pie and then three come along at once. I also found a Daffy, a Porky and a Petunia. So this is in fact bag number 31 of 72. Um, let's see if we can find something new in here. If not, we'll keep on going and hopefully not have to go through all 72 from the box. Uh, so we've got an inner bag in here. It was interesting. Um, that's the base plate. Got the leaflet back there. Then what have we got here? Oh, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So, in, in fact, ironically, next to the carrot that's printed on the front of the bag, I can feel the carrot inside there. Next to that is the little piece with the um, the stalk. You can feel it's got this kind of Y shape here. Uh, so this is going to be what's up, Doc? It's going to be uh, Bugs Bunny, who doesn't sound anything like that. But I am going to quickly feel around. Yeah, we've got long legs there. That's a torso piece. We do have hands and then a big head piece. So I want to be sure. Yeah, those ears are sticking up just like Bugs. What's up, Dark? And yeah, this is definitely, definitely, definitely going to be Bugs Bunny because the carrot is the piece you're feeling for. It's the only carrot in amongst these minifigures uh, for obvious reasons. Um, he sure does like his carrots, that wabbit. Uh, and yeah, here we go. So massive, massive headpiece here with the sticky up ears. Very, very um, rigid plastic. So really easy to find, but the easiest thing for bugs are the carrot pieces. So what we've got here is the orange carrot. Very distinctive uh, if you've ever felt one of these before. And then two of these stalk pieces, uh, which again, really easy to feel out in the bag. If, if all else fails, go feeling for the head with those ears sticking up, but don't mistake him with Wiley Coyote who has the uh, huge snout. So I'm gonna go ahead, put books together, and then uh, hopefully we can reunite all of the Looney Tunes characters. And so finally we come to the most recognizable character from Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny. A very similar character appeared in Porky's Hair Hunt in 1938. Bugs hit the mainstream two years later and appeared in more than 160 cartoons between 1940 and 1964. He's appeared in more films than any other cartoon character and has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It makes sense that the carrot munching Bugs is holding his own carrot. I would have also liked to have seen him come with a duck season sign. The carrot and stalk are very standard Lego elements and easy to feel inside that bag. 
Bugs Bunny is a tall and slender cartoon character, and I think Lego have got the proportions just right here. The legs are movable, so you can pose Bugs in a nice walking stance. There's also some really crisp printed detail on the toes. On the front of the torso, we have some printing for Bugs' white chest fur. The density of the printing isn't quite there, and it looks a little washed out. There's more printing around the back for Bugsy's tail, and it's a shame we didn't get a Lego element for that. Once again, Lego have knocked it out of the park with a beautifully moulded head. They've captured the shape perfectly, and those ears make him quite an easy feel. Just be careful not to mistake him with Wily Coyote. This is clearly Bugs Bunny, but for some reason I can't put my finger on, the facial printing just doesn't seem quite right. Maybe the printed lines on the face are a little bit too bold, but when you put him next to the cartoon character, there's no doubt the minifigure is a really nice recreation of Bugs. Arguably the most famous Looney Tunes character, I don't think Bugs Bunny is my favourite minifigure from the series. I'll get to that in just a moment, but let me stop rabbiting on. And so finally we have all 12 characters from the Looney Tunes collectible minifigure blind bags. With some careful feeling, I was able to get all 12 characters without any duplicates. Don't believe me? Here are the 60 spare bags, and yes, I did feel them all. I can confirm that a box of 72 minifigure blind bags contains 6 Lola Bunnies, 6 Bugs Bunnies, 6 Wily Coyotes, 6 Roadrunners, 6 Tweety Pies, 6 Sylvester the Cats, 6 Daffy Ducks, 6 Speedy Gonzales, 6 Tasmanian Devils which were squabbling over a chicken carcass, 6 Marvin the Martians, 6 Petunia Pigs, and 6 Porky Pigs. Da -da 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 that's all folks! So which of the 12 Looney Litany of lifelike minifigures is my favourite? Here's my rundown from worst to best. In last place is the relative newcomer Lola Bunny. In number 11, the almost forgotten Petunia Pig. My 10th favourite minifigure was Bugs Bunny. And in number 9, it was Porky Pig. At number 8, we've got Sylvester the Cat. With his Illudium Q36 explosive space modulator, Marvin the Martian is in 7th place. Running into number 6 is the Roadrunner. And at number 5, we have Daffy Duck. Speedy Gonzales, the fastest mouse in all of Mexico, comes in at number 4, and then we hit the top 3. In 3rd place, it's the Tasmanian Devil. Runner-up in 2nd place is Tweety Pie. And by far my favourite minifigure from this series is Wily Coyote. That head mould is something else. Overall, I think this is a great selection of minifigures with something for every Looney Tunes fan. Some of the characters, namely Lola and Petunia, are somewhat obscure, but beautifully executed. LEGO's mastery of head moulding of late is kicking out some magical minifigures, and this is a top-notch collection. I've really enjoyed spending time with these Looney Tunes characters, and I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Don't forget to check out my Instagram, at JeremyHerbertOfficial. And if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up really helps me to get traction on YouTube and reach more people. Thanks a million for checking out today's Looney Tunes collectible minifigure blind bag field guide and review. Stay safe and...